In this example, we are going to find the absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value of the function f defined as follows. f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1, where x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 4. Note that f is a continuous function on the Glock's interval 0 to 4, so f has an absolute minimum value and f has an absolute maximum value in this interval. To um, work on this problem, we will try to rewrite the function f as a piecewise defined function. To do so, we have to determine the sign of the function under the absolute value, which is x minus 1. Note that x minus 1 is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 1. So, from here, we can see that the sign of x minus 1 is positive if x is greater than 1, and the sign is negative if x is less than 1. How can we see that? Um, uh, to see that, we can substitute x by, say, um, uh, 2. x 2 minus 1 is uh, positive, so then the sign is positive here. Similarly, the sign is negative here when we replace, say, uh, x by 0. Okay, <laughs> so the function f can be rewritten as f of x equals x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1 because whenever x is greater than or equal to 1, x minus 1 here is greater than or equal to 0. And f of x is minus x minus 1 if x is less than 1 because x minus 1 here is less than 0. Remember that the absolute value of a number a is a if a is greater than or equal to 0 and minus a if a is less than 0. Okay, so this is the function f. The derivative of the function is 1 if x is strictly greater than 1. We simply find the derivative of x minus 1. The derivative of the function is minus 1 if x is less than 1. That is the derivative of this function. And we have to be very careful about the derivative of the function at 1. In fact, the derivative of the function f at 1 does not exist. How can we justify that? How can we justify that? Um, we can uh, compute the right derivative of the function at 1 and the left derivative of the function at 1. To find the right derivative of the function at 1, we care about the function at 1, near 1, and greater than 1. So we use this formula to find the um, derivative of the function the, at 1 from the right. And similarly, um, to find the left derivative of the function at 1, we care about the function values near 1 and less than 1. So we're going to use this formula and see that um, the derivative here is minus 1, so the left derivative of the function at 1 is minus 1. They are not equal, so the derivative of the function at 1 doesn't exist. Now, we are ready to find all critical numbers of the function in the interval 0, 4. We are looking at points at which the derivative is 0 or derivative doesn't exist. Okay, and we cannot find any um, number at which the derivative is 0. However, we can find a number in the interval 0 to 4 at which the derivative doesn't exist. That is 1. So the derivative at 1 doesn't exist. 1 is a critical number in this interval. In the second step, we evaluate f of 1. We replace x by 1 here, we get 0. So this is the function value at the critical number we get in this interval. Finally, we are going to find all um, function values at the end points 0 and 4 f of 0, we replace x by 0 here. We have the absolute value of 0 minus 1, which is 1. f of 4, we replace x by 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. We take the absolute value, we get 3. 
Now we are ready to determine the absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value. So from here, we conclude that the absolute minimum value is zero and it attains at um, x equals to one and the absolute maximum value is three and it attains at x equals four.